welcome to Badass Reviews at the Movies and today I'm gonna give a spoiler review to Dr. C. First off, a big kudos to director Mike Flanagan who not only had the unenviable task but also one of the toughest jobs in Hollywood to uh, make a sequel to the 1980s Shining movie which was directed by uh, none other than Stanley Kubrick himself but also a um, adapta an adaptation of uh, the Stephen King novel Doctor Sleep which was released about six years ago he does a pretty great job at it he bridges uh, both the uh, film as well as the original book very well in my opinion a lot of nods and homage he has paid to to both the movie and the novel uh, one of my favorites is the um, helicam tracking shot of um, Dan Torrance's car as he goes towards uh, he heads towards the old hotel up the mountain which is on an almost uh, most a shot for shot uh, replication of the uh, movie uh, in 1980 um, except that this is shot at night uh, it kind of build, it kind of built the terror and uh, uh, suspense a bit more uh, and a lot of other things which I think uh, he uh, I, I wouldn't call them Easter eggs I would actually I mean fans of both the film and book would notice them pretty obviously it's in fact uh, how Dan uh, mirrors his dad's uh, battle with his inner demons, you know, his alcoholism. And then there's a scene where, uh, at the, towards the end, where he injures his leg and he has an axe in the hand. It's the same leg that uh, Jack Torrance uh, injures in the Shining film. Um, it's, it holds the same kind of uh, um, scene where Jack walks with a limp. And the axe in his hand, Dan does the same thing here. Uh, his battle with alcoholism, as I mentioned, you know, same as his dad. And um, a few other things from the book, uh, the boiler room, which, you know, in the original, in the book, uh, basically, it, it was one of the biggest plot points of the book. It is what uh, caused the whole hotel to blow up, uh, which was not followed by Kubrick in his movie it was a bit different in the movie not a bit different a lot different which is why I kind of like the book more but as a personal opinion uh, so he had to change some things here Mike Flanagan to kind of uh, suit the, both the movie and the book so he does the boiler room explosion scene in this film uh, so there's an homage to the book here uh, the room where um, Dan Torrance puts his you know his ailing patients to sleep to sleep uh, the room number is room 217, which is the number in the book, uh, the number of the room that uh, you know, uh, Dan first meets the bathtub lady, which was changed in the movie, and uh, oh yeah, and um, a few other, you know, the music, a lot of musical cues were used as well, so you know, I really like that. And some might call it fan service, but I like it. Um, a, a few other things I want to mention about Mike Flanagan. <clears throat> Yeah, he does this subtle thing when uh, when uh, Dan takes over uh, Abra's body, uh, where the, where her eye color changes to uh, Dan's eye color. Very subtle and difficult to see in the uh, nighttime dark scene, but I caught it and I really like that small measure of detail. Uh, and uh, you know, Mike Flanagan is also very adept at showing the pain of his characters, uh, both physical and metaphysical and as I mentioned up front earlier about uh, Dan himself the pain inner pain that he goes through uh, Mike Flanagan does a great job he, he did a similar job in uh, The Haunting of Hill House the Netflix series which I think in, uh, in recent years it has been one of my favorite series especially from the horror genre which I'm not a uh, you know, big follower of and um, um, Ewan McGregor I mean Solid as usual, you know, he does a fantastic job. I really like him in, uh, in, in his Obi Wan beard, you know, he's rocking that Kenobi beard, which I'm sure has uh, no, you know, has no doubt, and it's because he's shooting for his upcoming Disney Plus series. Um, so he was rocking the beard, he acted really well, played the role perfectly. I thought, you know, he could see, you know, they don't bear uh, a resemblance to each other, Jack Nicholson and even McGregor, but <clears throat> his experiences as a kid, as a child. You can see it really, uh, uh, you know, lies heavy on his back, um, and he you can see it in his eyes and in his face, uh, 
and uh, how he changes over the years, um, how he starts up uh, embracing his shining a bit more. I uh, like that a lot. Um, I also have to mention the debut of uh, Kylie Curran, the child actress, uh, the teenage child actress who plays um, Abra in this film. Great debut, great debut. I'm looking forward to see and more films actually. Uh, I really like Abra Stone's character as well. Rebecca Ferguson, I mean, that smoldering attractiveness that she had in the movie. Uh, I've not read Doctor Sleep, so I don't know if it was, uh, you know, if Stephen King wrote it in the same way. But I kind of think that Rebecca Ferguson was perfectly casted as Rose the Head, the leader of the True North uh, cult. Um, you know, she, uh, she, you, you can believe that she is a leader of a cult. <coughs> Um, and uh, she has some great scenes with her uh, her fellow cult members. Um, I have to mention Zach McLaren, some of you might know him from Fargo and also Westworld where he played Akichata. Uh, great acting here, he was uh, he played the crow in, uh, uh, in this uh, movie. And a few other actors, Carl Lamy, many of you might know voice uh, Manhunter, Martian Manhunter in, uh, in the uh, you know, Justice League uh, animated series. He portrays uh, Dick uh, Halloran, um, you know, kind of a spectral vision of him. Um, he did a great job. And, uh, and uh, there is a scene where they kind of torture a young kid, quite brutally, in fact. I mean, you know, you don't really see the physical aspect, but you can see the face of the performer, which is why I was quite surprised when I saw Jacob Tremblay who's uh, an upcoming child actor playing this role. I, I mean, at the beginning, I was thinking, huh, why is he playing such a small kind of role, maybe, you know? Then I knew why, you know, when that scene came about. Uh, Mike Langham does a great job with the horror aspect. I know it was, uh, there were some scenes where it was, I wouldn't say jump scares, but, you know, they portrayed actual horror, uh, not the jump scare variety. Um, Big kudos to the music as well. The Newton Brothers, great job. Um, a lot of musical cues, um, notes from the uh, original film. I like that pumping uh, sound. I'm not sure what it's made on, but I really like that sound a lot. You know, something that Kubrick was very famous for using in uh, many of his movies. Um, that the use of the synth as well was perfect as well. So overall, I would give this movie 3.5 out of 5 and uh, uh, go watch this movie if you like, uh, you know, The Shining or even uh, the book, um, the, both the original book and Dr. Sleep. I think you guys would enjoy it. Um, so this has been a presentation of Badass Reviews at the Movies. Um, like, uh, share, subscribe, do that thing. But most importantly, keep calm and rock on.